It is only nine days until Christmas when the whole world will pause in the midst of its greatest crisis to pay homage to the Prince of Peace. In Europe, where people face the hardest winter in 10 years, there will be the traditional exchanging of gifts, the Christmas tree and Christmas carols. Even in the strife-torn Middle East, Christmas will be celebrated by thousands of Christians. In Little Hungary, where people have suffered probably more than any nation in modern times, where it has been proven that Russian steel and communist brainwashing has not been able to stamp out faith in God, Christmas will have a new meaning this year. Here in America, Christmas will be commercialized as usual, but events of the past few weeks will cause a soberness, reflection, and thoughtfulness on the part of millions of Americans. Some Americans will even wonder how many more peaceful Christmases we will enjoy. Certain of the world can never be the same again after the rape of hunger and the fighting in the Middle East. A little girl asked me the other day as we were talking about Christmas and the coming of Christ in Bethlehem's manger, what is Christ doing now? Where is Christ now? That is a good question that I would like to answer today. The Bible teaches that Christ is now at the right hand of God the Father interceding for us. He has become our mediator and high priest. It is the nature of man not only to seek God, but to seek a mediator between God and himself. Uh, way back in the days of Abraham, we read of Melchizedek, who was a priest of the Most High God. He served the first sacrament to Abraham when he brought forth bread and wine, and Abraham gave him tithes of all. From that day to this, in every quarter of the world, men have sought a mediator, a go-between, as a means of communicating with God. In Africa, it is the medicine man. In India, it is the Brahman. In Egypt, the Muslim priest. And in Thailand, the mediator is the Buddhist monk. Everywhere, in every century, men have sought access to God. For centuries before Christ, the Israelites approached God through the Levites. These priests stood between God and the people, offering sacrifices, burning incense, and making atonement for their sins. Although all this was in accord with God's plan for Israel, it was merely a preview of that which was to come. The Levites made sacrifices for sin, while they themselves were sinners. Though they were consecrated to the priesthood, they were mere men, prone to commit the same sins for which they sought atonement for others. The whole mediatorial picture was incomplete and in many ways unsatisfactory. It cried for fulfillment, and the whole creation groaned for redemption that would completely reconcile alien man to God. Finally, in the fullness of time, God sent his Son in the world to make good, all that had been promised in the types and shadows of the Old Testament. The key word of the Old Testament is law, but the key word of the New Testament is love. The reach of the Old Testament was to a single nation, but the reach of the New Testament was to the world. The law restrained man, but the love of God is revealed in the New Testament, redeemed them from sin and reconciled them to himself. With the coming of Jesus, a new deal was launched. The day he made final atonement for sin upon the cross, the veil in the temple was rent in twain. Human priesthood as such was terminated. The partition which separated the court of the people from the Holy of Holies was destroyed. And through Christ, all men had access to God. The Bible says, For he is our peace, and hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Christ is now our high priest. He with the pierced hand stands between us and God. The scriptures teach, Now in Christ Jesus ye who were sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. The Bible says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast to our profession. Again the Bible says, for there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible teaches that Christ is a great high priest, a qualified high priest, a God-appointed high priest, a sinless high priest, an eternal high priest, and an exalted high priest. First, let us see, he is a great high priest. Angelic beings ascribe greatness to no other man who ever lived except Jesus. When they announced his birth to Mary that first Christmas night, the angel said, He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give him the throne of David. He was great in his pre-existence, great in his incarnation in the flesh, 
great in his wisdom, great in his power, great in his compassion, great in his understanding, great in his humility, great in his patience, great in his selflessness, great in his suffering, great in his death, great in his resurrection, great in his ascension, great in his intercession, and he will be great when he comes again. Isaiah's prophecy, his name shall be called Wonderful, has been fulfilled in the lives of millions of people. In every century, his name has stood out as if written in letters of fire above every name. He is a great high priest who in love and mercy pleads our cause in the heavenlies and continuously brings God and man within reach of each other. Secondly, in the Bible, he is called a divinely appointed high priest. The Bible says, so also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest. But he said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. Christ did not ask for the high honor that was bestowed upon him by the Father. He was chosen because he alone is worthy to bridge the gap between God and man. In heaven, when tens of thousands lift their voices, they will say, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Our high priest has equal identity in heaven and in earth. He alone is qualified because he established residence upon earth and as man can represent us. He has influence in heaven because he is the only beloved of the Father, indeed co-equal with the Father, and it pleases the Father to grant his request. There can be but one mediator between God and man, and that is he who was appointed by God himself, Jesus Christ. Thirdly, he is a sinless high priest. The Bible says, We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Christ, who is our high priest, being sinless, can plead our cause more effectively than the priest of old, who were themselves sinners. He prays for us as he prayed for the disciples. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, Holy Father. Keep them through thy name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Since Christ has experienced every temptation, since he knows what it means to grapple with the satanic forces that beset the soul, he can pray for us with understanding. As the Bible says, it is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Since he alone emerged from the world seen sinless and pure, since he bore our sins in his body on the tree, he can hold up his hands before God and say, Forgive them, Father. Remember, I took the penalty for their sins. See these scars? They are the marks of my encounter with Satan for their sins. And when their sins were laid upon me, these scars were made. And God will hear his plea. For he is the divinely appointed mediator between God and man. You are depressed by circumstances and harassed by temptation. Christ prays for you. You are misunderstood and persecuted for righteousness' sake. He intercedes for you. You are never out of his thinking. If you're in him, he pleads your case more earnestly than any earthly advocate. And you cannot lose because he is on your side. He is the sinless, divinely appointed mediator. And your needs are ever upon his heart. Fourthly, he is a sympathetic high priest. We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, says the Bible. There is no more tender phrase in all of the scripture. He does not stand aloof from our suffering and our sorrows. He does not leave us writhing in the anguish of our woes. Like the good Samaritan, he does not pass us by on the other side. He is moved with compassion, which means that when we suffer, he suffers too. Political leaders, no matter how well-intentioned, cannot be touched with the feeling of our individual infirmities. They have a general interest, but they have no way of entering into our troubles and sorrows. But the Bible says that what touches us touches Christ. He is touched by our physical infirmities. He is touched by our spiritual weaknesses. He is touched by the infirmities of our prayers. He will pick out the one earnest petition from the rubbish of our words and answer it. He is touched with the infirmity of our temper. He is touched with the inability to do good. He binds up all our weaknesses and prays for us and pleads with his heavenly Father to be merciful to those for whom he died. He is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He is a sympathetic high priest. When we are forsaken, he understands because he has been forsaken. When we are misunderstood, 
he understands because he was misunderstood. When we're lonely, he understands because he spent many hours while upon this earth alone and in solitude. When we suffer privation, he understands for the foxes have holes and the birds of the air nest, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He was in all points tempted like as we are. Therefore, he is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He is a compassionate, sympathetic high priest. You that are lying upon beds of affliction today, you that are suffering temptations beyond endurance, I tell you that Christ understands. He is a sympathetic high priest interceding for you at this moment at the right hand of God the Father. Fifthly, he is an exalted high priest. The Bible says we have a high priest who is set at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. No other person in heaven on earth is qualified to be an exalted mediator between God and man. He alone passed the rigid test of earth and heaven and emerged triumphant. The Bible says, Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. He is the only approach to God. He alone is the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. He alone has the ear of God in the heart of the world. He alone can bring God and man into the close relationship which was intended from the beginning. He is our high priest, regardless of race, caste, color, or class. He stands ready to intercede for all who come to God through him. The Mau Mau in Africa is just as eligible as the Society Bell in Boston. The Coolie of the Orient is just as desirable in God's sight as the Tycoon of Wall Street. The Untouchable of India is just as qualified to enter the Holy of Holies as a college beauty queen. There is only one qualification and stipulation that God has, and that is that we repent of our sins and receive His Son as Savior. There is no difference. He died for all. He seeks all who are lost. He invites whosoever will to come boldly to the throne of grace. Sixthly, the Bible teaches that Christ is an eternal high priest. Priests of old served their tenure, growing old and passed from the temple scene. But we have a high priest eternal in the heavens. The Bible says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing that he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Everything in this world has the marks of decay upon it. Our bodies begin to die the day we are born. Even the most majestic buildings made by men, though they be of granite and marble, require constant maintenance to keep them from falling to the ground. This is a decaying, dying, deteriorating world. But in Christ there is no change. He ever liveth. He is the one durable, unchanging, eternal hope of the world. The relationship of nations, people, states, and races undergo constant change depending on circumstances. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I ask you today, is he your high priest? Is he your mediator? Is he your go-between between your sinful soul and a righteous God? Have you put your case in his hands? Are you willing to trust him with your soul, your life, and your all? I challenge you to take him as your very own today. The Bible says, and thousands have found hope in this promise, as many as received him. To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Renounce your sins today. Receive him as your savior. Let him be your representative at the right hand of God the Father. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we thank thee that when we come to thee in the name of Jesus Christ, Thou dost hear and answer our prayers because we have at thy right hand this great intercessor, this high priest, this go-between, this mediator, even Jesus Christ the righteous. And we thank the heavenly Father that we can come to his cross and find forgiveness of sin and realize that we have a representative at thy right hand interceding for us at this moment. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.